Hello, everyone. Sorry for the shade in my face here. Uh, welcome back. We're on, I believe, Kyle, who is the presenter of the day. Um, so Kyle works in Google, or works for Google in Mountain View, California. His job on the developer relations team is to support awesome developer communities like the Google Developer Experts and Developer Student Clubs. And I believe he also works a little bit with GDGs. Um, in his spare time, he enjoys building and hacking on the web, playing with his two cats, and photographing the outdoors. Uh, before he worked at Google, Kyle was a startup founder, an organizer for GDG Kansas City, a Google Developer Expert, and an ally with the Women Tech Maker community. So welcome, Kyle, to our DevFest. Awesome. Thanks for the intro, Dan. I will let you take it away. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Uh, and Lloyd, I did see your note. I promise not to say, hey, Google, but uh, yeah, mine. Uh, but awesome. Thank you all for having me. Uh, happy to be at the Midwest DevFest. And as Dan mentioned, you know, I'm originally from uh, Kansas City, so happy to be back in the Midwest and you know, speaking with all of you. I wish it could be all in person, but uh, here's to here's to the future. Uh, I know we had a uh, it's a little different, and typically, what I like to do in this talk is you know ask um, you know a couple of housekeeping questions, but. In the chat, go ahead and let me know who's new to Firebase. If you've never used Firebase before, or if you've built something with Firebase, just go ahead and type those in the chat. We'd, I'd love to see you know, kind of what experience we're at here. Cool, I see a, a bunch of new, awesome, cool. So this is great because this is a intro to Firebase talk, if you will. Uh, it's going to cover a lot of what's, uh, you can do with Firebase and what Firebase is, what it does, what services that it offers. So there's a lot of fun things that you can do. And hopefully you learn a lot in this talk. Uh, all of you that are, you know, I, I see the chat just going crazy here. So a lot of brand new, awesome, cool. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Again, I am Kyle Paul. I am a North America regional lead at Google. You can find me on the social medias uh, with that, uh, that's my handle there. Uh, so I am at Google. I've been with Google a couple of years now. And as Dan mentioned, I currently look after the Google Developer Experts Program, the Developer Student Clubs Program, all cloud initiatives in North America. I used to look after the GDG and the WTM programs as well, but uh, Cuber now looks after those. I believe she might have been on earlier. But, uh, but yeah, so that's what I do here at Google. Uh, I am very passionate about Firebase, so I don't come from the Firebase team, but I was a Firebase GDE prior to joining Google. So uh, very passionate about, about Firebase. I've been using it uh, since around the time Google acquired them way, way back in the day. But uh, before I get any further, you know, who knows what every single presentation needs? Cats! So, uh, so with with this, uh, so this is Penny and Jules, one of the few photos where they're being having some fun and snuggling with each other. But uh, traditionally, I bring my cats with uh, this photo with me whenever I'm traveling and speaking. This way, my cats can uh, can come with me. Uh, one of them is down over here. So if she wakes up and wants attention, I might bring her up on screen if she's uh, if she wants to during the talk. But uh, wanted to share my cats. And with that, uh, like, I, like I mentioned, I'm on the North America Developer Ecosystem team. And along with what we do, obviously all of you are familiar with the Google Developer Groups and the Women Tech Maker Program. We also have the Google Developer Experts Program, which is highlights individuals in the community that are experts in XYZ technology. So if you're interested in becoming a GDE or learning more about what the program is, what it does, uh, you know, feel free to reach out to me as well. Happy to answer any questions there. We also have a program for uh, startups, as, which is called our accelerator program. We have different cohorts that run throughout the year. So there's applications to enter into this. 
If you are part of a startup uh, or interested in learning more, you can go to the community's website and learn more about our accelerator program there. Uh, I also mentioned that I look after the developer student clubs, uh, which is essentially their GDGs within universities. And so this runs throughout the school year and we help bring content to the students, uh, university students, to help them grow and upskill. So that way when they join your GDG chapters and when they go out, become experts, this kind of stuff. So we're just trying to help further along their their uh, expertise journey earlier in in the pipeline there. So with that, uh, so kind of the agenda uh, I'm gonna cover today is, you know, all of you are here because you either create mobile apps, web apps, a lot of this can be pretty lucrative. You're part of big teams, small teams, or you're a solo developer. So there's a lot of things to cover when you're doing with, uh, when you're building an application. And as all of us know, when you're building an app, time and resources are very constrained. So you're, ha you're having to deal with all the tools that you're dealing with, uh, timelines, you know, uh, all of these things come together. Uh, when, when you're looking at what tools to use, like if you're building a mobile app, if you're going native, you have to do Android Studio and Xcode, and, or if you're using Flutter, you know, you go that route. You know, there's a lot of different tools and infrastructures to use when you're uh, building an application, not only whether it's mobile or web, you have your backend, you have your client side, there's a lot of different moving parts. And so uh, what, ha what needs to happen is in order to create a successful app, things just need to be a little bit more simpler. So a lot of us, you know, have heard the term full stack developer, and obviously this is a greatly simplified version of what that means. So a full stack developer, you wear many hats, you look after multiple databases, you might write uh, your own API layer in there uh, that can handle the uh, authentic. In the client side and the server side, uh, you also, I mean, as I mentioned, the database and the server. So there's lots of different things that are happening and, you know, from a client's perspective at your your customer, they don't really see any of this. They just want their app to work and, and happen. But you know, like I mentioned, this, this diagram is way too simplified. So this is actually <laughs> more what it looks like, right? So full stack really isn't that, so, that simple. You're not dealing with a single database and a single server. A lot of times you're dealing with multiple servers, especially if you're using third-party services. Uh, you have multiple databases and tables that you're structuring. So it's, it gets a lot of um, more hairy on the back end here. So when creating an app, you know your application shouldn't be that complicated and have to rely that much on such a massive infrastructure. You know, especially as a developer, as a developer on a smaller team or even on a larger team, this is just a lot to handle here. At the end of the day, the user and your customer does not care how it runs, what infrastructure you use, and you know they. You know, and think about this every day is whenever we're using apps today, whether it's on our mobile devices or on our computers, all we care about is that it works fast, it works offline, it can be on any device, whether I'm going from my Android phone to my iPhone to my laptop, and it's easy to authenticate. You don't want to make it difficult for somebody to get into your app, right? So, so these are the four main things that your that your users and your customers really care about: fast, offline, multi-device, and easy to authenticate. And so, this is where Firebase comes in and shows its strength. So, Firebase offers a suite of services that you can use together to serve as your app's backend. You know, and with these services. With Firebase, you don't have to have, use all of them. You can cherry pick which ones you want to use, and you can also tie them into other services that you use too. So some of you might be familiar with some of these brands. Uh, so all of these and more use Firebase on production out there in the real world. So if you're thinking, you know, you might have, you know, not had the greatest experience with Firebase, or you might have you know, not fully understood what's going on with Firebase, whatever. It's trusted by a lot of these big names here and more. So, so don't feel that, you know, Firebase is just for prototyping or anything like that. There's a lot of powerful things that you can do with Firebase. Uh, side note, 
it's not on the list here, but you know, all of you that logged into the Remo platform use Firebase authentication to join. So if you authenticated and you're here today, you used Firebase. <laughs> so, uh, so here are the 18 different things that you can use with Firebase, all these different technologies. And it's kind of divided up into develop and grow. And this goes across your mobile apps and web apps on what, uh, what tools and features you're able to use to help quickly get your app off the ground and scale it. What we're going to look at today, though, is focus, since we're all generally developers, and I guess I didn't ask this question, but ho hopefully I'm assuming correctly that all of you are interested in developer technologies or, and or developer in some shape or form. So when we look into developing an application, and so when I'm saying application here, this translates either to web or mobile. So, uh, so interchangeable at the moment. So when we're developing our app, we're going to focus in on just these features here. I did add one more that's not in the list, uh, but we'll, we'll go ahead and cover that. But, uh, but first, we're going to look at the real-time database. So the real-time database is a cloud-hosted NoSQL JSON database. So what, uh, you know, those of you who have any interest in databases or have experience in that, you know that there's the primary two where you have SQL style, uh, SQL, and then you have no SQL style or no SQL. And so if you've heard of products such as like MongoDB, that's something more like Firebase in a sense, but this is uh, with the real-time database, it's JSON structured. So with JSON, this is typically what you're gonna see whenever you hit an API, you're gonna receive a JSON response back, typically. I mean, sometimes it's XML, don't at me. But uh, it'll, a lot of times it's JSON that you receive back and how you parse it. And that's how this database is structured. So it's very powerful, it's very fast. And so when data is written to the Firebase database, it's synchronized to all of the devices within seconds. So as you can see here, the red line uh, simple, uh, symbolizes data being written to Firebase and instantly it's updating all the other connected clients. And with it being real time, the client does not have to refresh. So while you're looking at your mobile device, the number or images, the feed, whatever the app is, will instantly update in real time. And this is where you can build those rich collaborative applications. And as of last year, they've doubled the concurrent connections. So you can have up to 200,000 concurrent connections. So you can have 200,000 devices connected concurrently at a time. Uh, a question I get a lot when I mention that, because that's an amazing, outstanding number. And that's 200,000 per second. So if there's 200,000 in one, in that one second, then that, uh, that connection request just fails silently and all you do is refresh and you can reconnect again. There's no uh, big data loss or anything like that. And typically for general, you know, 99% of the apps out there, you're not gonna have 200,000 people connecting all in the same second. So. Uh, so this is the other one that was missing from that list I shared earlier that we we're gonna talk about, but I also wanted to share Cloud Firestore. So Cloud Firestore is the other database option that you can do with Firebase. And I know I mentioned MongoDB earlier. So if you're familiar at all with MongoDB, um, uh, yeah, if you're interested at all in MongoDB, uh, it's a document collection style database. And so that's what F Cloud Firestore is like. However, Cloud Firestore is also real time. So it's not only is it like the real time database that I just shared a second ago, it's document collection style. So that way you have the capability to structure your data in a more, um, you know, more how you're familiar with in a, I, I wouldn't, I won't go as far as saying SQL style, but you, in more documents and collections, it's a better structure. And what comes from that is a much easier and more powerful way to query your data back out. And the awesome thing is you know, that keeps it fully serverless is the SDK, SDKs are, are you know, come prepackaged for web and mobile. So you instantly have everything that's available to access your database and continue to keep it in real time without having to stand up your own server or deal with any of that. Uh, the other thing that you have is you can still synchronize your app data, just like I mentioned in the real-time database. However, 
with Cloud Firestore, it natively comes with offline first for iOS, Android, and web. So if you're looking to be able to support your user base with offline first, Cloud Firestore is definitely the way to go here. And so, you know, as I mentioned here, when you're building the hierarchies for Cloud Firestore, you want to store your data and easily to retrieve documents and collections. So that way you can do more expressive queries. And I, uh, sorry, I just saw some stuff popping up on the chat. <laughs> little, it's a little distracting. I didn't, wouldn't think it would be, uh, but all, and then the other thing is all of your queries scale to the size of your result set. So not your data set, so your result set and what, uh, what comes with that. And what makes it even faster is that your data is received back as a snapshot. I'm not going to do your client side stuff to, if you need to filter any further or whatever like that, but that's what helps keep it the connection fast between uh, Firebase and your application. Another awesome feature, uh, again, like I mentioned earlier, Remo is using this. Uh, most apps require an auth authentication when you want to use the services. And it, this helps to provide a personalized experience, whether you're saving data back to a user profile and order history, you know, the list goes on. Uh, and so with Firebase authentication, you have your traditional email and password authentication that you can set up. It also integrates with all the major uh, uh, single sign-on services, Google, Facebook, Twitter, GitHub, the list goes on here. The awesome thing is, is that with Firebase on authentication, you can also integrate it into your existing uh, authentication system. So if, you're, if your company happens to be running an auth authentication system, it's you can easily integrate into it and migrate things over or just take it over entirely with Firebase authentication to help keep it the, the user flow much more simplified and secure. Uh, there's a, there is an open source UI library on GitHub that you can tap into. Uh, it, it integrates with other Firebase services as well, but you know, those of you who have had to work on a authentication system in the past, you know, I, you know, for a previous company I worked for, I had to build an, an authentication system end to end. It is a tremendous nightmare with having to deal with, you know, the password hashing, security, encryption, you know, the, the forgot password authentication flow. There's a lot that goes into it other than just, hey, type in an email password. There's a lot that goes in behind it. And Firebase authentication makes that so easy. You go into the console, turn it on and add it to your application and you're essentially done. <laughs> it is that easy. Uh, the other awesome feature of cloud, uh, sorry, of Firebase is the Firebase Cloud Functions. I love this feature so much. Uh, it's basically what it is, uh, it's a uh, tiny serverless uh, application that you kick off. And so what you, what you would do here is instead of taking all of your backend server side logic, and typically when we're thinking of, about that, it's you know Java, PHP, Python backend server, server processes. We can break those down in smaller bits and chunks to where, and write it all in Node.js where you know, Firebase can just execute them in response to different events that happen within Firebase, or you can also hit them with uh, HTTP and uh, po uh, to do uh, HTTPS to, uh, to handle the event triggers. So uh, some examples that you can do here, and it, so it's an event-driven model where you have to trigger the function to run and so, oh, sorry, I forgot. I also had this in here too. So uh, Firebase recently came out with, uh, as of the end of last year, came out with Firebase extensions, which are pre-packaged Firebase Cloud functions to, that help save you time. So that way, all you do is enable them and it could help you to automatically translate text, trigger emails to send. You can sync with uh, MailChimp or resize images. So it has some of that pre-baked in for you. Uh, if you want to customize it, an example here is using Dialogflow with a Google Assistant. So when you're creating an action on Google for the Google Assistant, uh, whenever somebody says, find me a recipe for homemade cannoli, it sends that to Dialogflow. Dialogflow then sends it to your webhook, AKA Firebase, that goes and hits your, wh whatever database you're ho hooking into, and then 
handles that response. Something to break it down a little bit more is, let's say you have a image sharing application or you're building something like a social media app or something where users of your application are gonna be sharing images. With a Firebase Cloud function, it, it captures that uh, the event of an image being uploaded to the server, the, which automatically triggers the function. Your code doesn't need to trigger the function. Just the action of the image landing on the server triggers Firebase because you're listening for that event. Firebase runs the function that converts that image to a thumbnail, writes it back to writes the location to the database, saves the thumbnail to a space in your storage. And that way, when the client goes back to look at the gallery, they see a thumbnail instead of this massive five meg, five meg uh, image trying to load in the gallery. So this way, you, you don't have to process anything uh, heavy on the back end. You don't need to use third-party services. Firebase can handle all of this for you. And then that brings me to Firebase Hosting. So Firebase Hosting is an amazing product and uh, one of the super awesome best features that you know you can you know everybody here should start using is Firebase hosting because it is free global CDN that's encrypted by SSL through, by default. So and with this hosting, it's it's uh, a little different than traditional hosting because it's HTML, CSS, and JavaScript in some minor images only. So I, if you're doing a lot of heavy images and stuff like that, I would save those in your cloud storage buckets. But if you're doing like minor images, like a company logo, uh, Firebase logo that you want to have at the bottom built by Firebase, built with Firebase, sorry, um, stuff like that. Uh, so it's just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. What that means too is that you can use, you know, your uh, front end frameworks like Angular, Vue.js, React, like th those kind of things all work here. And like I mentioned, it's a global CDN. It does support custom domains. So you can bring in whatever domain you want. It does give you, you know, your project URL by default custom domain. And the awesome thing is, is hosting integrates with your cloud functions. So that way you can build dynamic web pages as well. So there's a lot of awesome things that you can do here. Uh, and you know, as part of this global CDN, it's SSDs that are, you know, in our data centers all over. So whenever you're hosting a file within your your Firebase hosting, it's instantly everywhere for all of your users, wherever they are. Uh, and as I was mentioning storage, so like if you want to store large binaries, such as images, PDFs, uh, the list goes on here, you can use Firebase Cloud Storage. And with the Firebase Cloud Storage within your application, it allow it enables your application to use, uh, you know, a file a file storage that where you can upload or download files gracefully, even if the network connection is poor. So, and it's backed by Google Cloud Storage. So, uh, obviously, and so that's where you have the capability of that global edge caching as well. And like the database, like uh, just like the real-time database or the fi uh, cloud file store, it can be direct uh, directly accessed from the app without the need for an application server. So in your code, you can directly go to cloud storage and say, I need this to, for my user to download. You don't have to go through a, a, a middle application server that, to handle this request. You can go, uh, hit it directly and ask for the, the storage. So there's a lot of advantages to Firebase uh, that I've been talking about, but uh, I want to I'm going to narrow down just a couple that uh, I personally think are really what shows uh, Firebase and where in any application that you're building, whether it's mobile or web, you know, with with Firebase authentication. First off, as I as I was talking about, if you've ever built an authentication system from the ground up you know what I mean, how difficult it is. The password encryption, the hashing, the uh, the forgot your password work, work, uh, workflow, the user flow, sorry. So having to deal with that, the security questions, like the list goes on, you know, having to make the password so complex, and, you know, it has, it has to be alphanumeric with 18 uh, exclamation points. And, you know, all, you know, all of these things are just overly complex. And, 
difficult for a developer to manage and stay on top of. So using Firebase authentication you know, at minimum, it makes your application stronger. And you know, as I mentioned, you can cherry pick the different services from Firebase. So if you just use Firebase authentication in your application, then that's it. I mean, you're already at a head start there. Uh, the other feature that I really like when you're using uh, Firebase, whether it's the uh, real-time database, the cloud file store, or the cloud storage, it's an auto magic API. So there's a REST API that's tied around to everything. So you get these API results instantly from your application. You have direct access to the, the database, direct access to your storage, all from your application. You don't have to deal with uh, a, a middle application server. And uh, so when, and you don't have to build your own API to do this. It's just part of the SDK. So I, I know, uh, again, in a past life, I had to build an API on top of an application server on top of a database that had to serve an Android and iOS app. And just having to roll your own API for a complex system is, you know, just like an authentication system, you have to have all of the security around it and everything. So trying to roll your own API is difficult as well. So uh, being that Firebase provides that API for you to access your data and it's built as you grow your database, uh, it's invaluable here. Uh, the other awesome thing I really like is with the data security. So if you're using the real-time database, the Cloud Firestore, Cloud Storage, it's security at the node level. And so what that means is you can write your security rules in JSON format. And what it does is you're able to secure the document to only that user can read it instead of making it general rules. So what I'm talking about here is if you're looking at a SQL database, you are securing the table and you're not necess necessarily securing the cell. You're securing certain things with the SQL table, but you can't really secure that particular cell. With Firebase security rules, you can say only, you know, through the Firebase security rules, you can get down to this, uh, that particular node that this node can only uh, only be accessed or only can have this written to it. You know, there's there's lots of different ways to 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 put that, but it's just makes your application so much more secure because you have that customizability. Uh, I mean, obviously, the huge pro is that it's a free global CDN for Firebase hosting. So if uh, if it, if anything that uh, on that, so it's low latency, easy access, you know, it's all you do uploading files. Uh, the other uh, that makes it very easy for all of us developers out there is there's no infrastructure. There's no servers to manage. You don't have to tell it how many CPUs to have or what bandwidth. You don't have to manage all that. It auto scales up and auto scales down for you. Uh, obviously, there are tiered packages that you can get into with pricing and whatnot, but regardless of what tier you're in, it's going to auto scale up and auto scale down automatically for you. And you know, as with anything serverless, you don't have to deal with any server or security updates. You know, I used to run a hosting platform, and you have to take down the server to run the the, the security patches and OS up, updates and everything like that. You don't have to worry about anything like that anymore with serverless, especially with Firebase. And then uh, you don't have to deal with ISP downtime or failovers as if you were trying to run something on-prem with, uh, with Firebase. Uh, some disadvantages, uh, I've, obviously, I mean, I know I've been talking a lot about how amazing and awesome Firebase is, but I mean, there are some caveats to be aware of. Uh, with the real-time database, you know, I mentioned this a little bit earlier, querying is kind of limited. You know, it, it depends on how you structure your data first. You can't do a whole lot of complex querying with it. So, so that's where you have to be better about how you model your data going into it. So that's kind of a gotcha if you're not as familiar with the real-time database and you try to go back and like, oh, wh where can I get this data? That's kind of a gotcha. Uh, and so it's just a, a heads up if you're using the real-time database. The Cloud Firestore database ha can handle a lot more of the complex querying, but it's still not, if you come from an SQL background, you're not going to have that. It's a different style of querying, you know, obviously because, you know, SQL versus, you know, uh, NoSQL you're gonna have the different style of querying. So that's something just to be uh, aware of there. 
Uh, and that's where, you know, come into with the NoSQL and NoSQL, you know, with, uh, with the real-time database, it's a JSON structure. So how you have the different nodes lined up in there. And then with the Cloud Firestore, it's a document collection. As I mentioned earlier, if you're familiar with MongoDB, it's going to be very similar to the document collection style there. Uh, but, you know, so if you d aren't coming from a NoSQL background already, this is kind of a, a little a bit of a learning curve for you. Obviously, I mean, for me, I recommend going ahead and learning it anyways, because it's the power that you can get with Firebase in here, especially that all of this is real time. That's where you're really going to excel and uh, have a great time with Firebase here. Uh, the security rules, while they are super powerful and very secure, it can be easy to uh, to not know what you're doing in there because of how secure you can make things. Uh, I know Martin in his previous talk, he was talking about I am, you know, how to set up the different security rules and everything in there. With that, Fire, Firebase security rules, just take that complexity and crank it up to 11 on this one, just because of how granular you can get with these security rules. Uh, it, um, it definitely makes things a lot more complex. So it's a little bit, again, of a learning curve to understand what you're doing there in the security rules. But definitely take the time to learn it because it's going to just help keep your app secure and everything powerful. Uh, and then the last thing that you might hear sometimes on uh, if you're reading tutorials or blogs, you know, for some reason, even though it's a, a Google product, a lot of people don't like that you have to use a Google authentication in order to sign into Firebase to use it. Yeah, I don't, but uh, that's why I put that here. <laughs> it's just kind of something that, you know, some people have complained about. Uh, but I mean, it's a Google tool and service. It's the same thing when you log into Google Cloud, you're getting into Google authentication there in order to use the product and service. So with that, I'm going to hop over to a demo. Uh, so if all of you that are uh, participating want to go to this link here, it's bit.ly slash Firebase sample with a capital F and capital S. And you should see something Oops, wait for it to wake back up. So you should see something like this page. Uh, you not? Yes, okay, you should be seeing my screen. So you should be something that says Firebase Analytics and a test tracking page. What that's doing is it's feeding my, uh, feeding this here. So you can see as you refresh, as you join in, pardon me, I'm not saving this anywhere. All it's doing is just showing you the power of Firebase with real time. I'm not refreshing this page. All you're doing is every time you hit that analytics link, it's going to just log your um, your agent just to show that you were there. And then the second you leave, yeah, we're yeah, crank that number up for me. <laughs> but the second you leave, it just drops it into a past visitors just to show that you know you were there, how long you were there for. And so it's just kind of showing the power of real time here. So the more the more times you refresh, and this doesn't matter what device you're on. If you're on your mobile device, if you're on your laptop, you know, however you're looking at it. Uh, yes, yeah. So Bitly Firebase sample with a capital F and capital S on this one. If you wanna if you wanna check that out. But but yeah, so it's just uh, just bringing you just just showing you from your user agent here on this page. And the, the source code for this is on my GitHub. I have a thing later for that, but, but yeah, this is just very simple, very minimal uh, JavaScript that's running here. So all I'm doing is I, I'm capture, listening for the event of a user uh, joining and then uh, a user leaving and it, how it's just updating the database there. Uh, so I see some Nexus 5s in here, some Mac OS X on 11, Windows, Oh, uh, oh, another Nexus 5. Ooh, we got some Chrome users. Nice, very cool. Oh, Windows NT, interesting. Awesome, so, so yeah, so there's just some fun stuff in here. Um, but yeah, so with that, uh, on to the, the next demo I have. And that brings you to, so if you go to bit.ly, slash Firebase quiz with a capital F and a capital Q. And thank you to Lloyd and Jay for dropping those links into the chat for me. <laughs> uh, 
Um, but yeah, Bitly Firebase Quiz, it'll bring you to a, a page to join. And so if you join, this is the code here. So 534432. So if you if you join, it'll automatically pop up here who's joined my quiz. Ooh, sweet. Hey Rob, how's it going? Brock, BP, KKO, NB. So yeah, as you can see, all of you, like in real time, it's you're just joining my quiz. And once we get a healthy list going here. So it I can wait a couple more seconds. If there's more people joining. Five, four. So it's uh so the, the code is five three four four three two. Yep. Or if you're on a mobile device, you can scan the QR code. It might be a little tiny though, sorry if that's if that's happening for you. But uh if we're if we're good to go, cool. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and click begin. So five, four, three, two, one, if you haven't joined yet. All right. And so this should also be showing on whatever your device is. And so you just pick which one your, which one the answer is. So Firebase stores data formatted in what? So the correct answer was JSON and we have a bunch of correct answers here. Awesome. So Firebase uses the blank model. Is it event driven, request reply, pub sub, or triggered? Yeah, if you don't, yeah, if you don't get to answer, uh, it, uh, it, um, the, the timer automatically goes for you. And I believe somebody's in here as host as me. <laughs> So Firebase allows developers to store and sync data across. Uh, and so we have some correct answers here. Awesome. And it should be updating on your device. Yeah, it's, sometimes it does catch if uh, if you didn't answer the, the question qu uh, fast enough. And ag again, this is, uh, ooh, so we got a couple of correct answers here. So cool. So yes, this is just a, a fun fun little test to show. You can look at the code for it. it uh, I do need to update something, so apologies if you had issues. Uh, if if you did have any issues, let me know what devices you were on, because uh, you know sometimes it depends on the device that you're using. I've I've found uh, so uh, just a Chrome window. Interesting. Uh, okay. So yeah, the, it, it's been a minute since I've touched the code for this, but. Uh, Awesome work, Brock, on here for getting through. Uh, and so quickly back to my slides. You did not, so the question is, uh, and so what the idea with that, with this project here for the pop quiz is the question shows up on my screen as the, uh, as the controller, and then on your device is only the answers. So think of it as kind of a, uh, you know, a trivia game that you can play on a TV and everybody's device only has the, the questions. So you can like plug in your answer. In the interest of time and everything like that, I had the timer like really, really short. So sorry if everything seemed really fast, but, but yeah, so my device was the main controller. Everybody think of your device as a game pad. So sorry, I didn't explain that beforehand, but, uh, but yeah, so that's kind of the idea behind some of the stuff that you can do, even fun stuff with Firebase. So and, you know what what was fun with this is you know from my screen here it, i was able to, con to control all of your devices by you know using the real time features of firebase to you know switch what views you were seeing and you know collecting your answers and and everything like that so yeah and, and again apologies you know i had the short timer just in the interest of time here uh but, um, but yeah, so if you want to learn more about what I talked about in this presentation, 
There's the Firebase presentation link here that brings you to more documentation and to learn a lot more. There's also the Code Labs link here that will bring you to the Firebase Code Labs to where you can do things with uh, Flutter, Android, iOS, and of course web uh, to learn more things how uh, to uh, to integrate things in Code Lab form with what I talked about here today on Firebase. And you know that's that's Firebase. Hopefully you all enjoyed, learned a lot. Uh, sorry if it was a little frustrating on the pop quiz, but uh, but yeah, that was it was great. Hopefully you choose Firebase the next time. Uh, you look to develop an app and or you know migrate over to Firebase. And again, this just covered essentials so that you can focus on uh, what what to do next. And with that, I am Kyle Paul. That is again my social handle. You can find me on you know the socials as well as LinkedIn. This is my face. So if you're looking for me, uh, and then the there's my GitHub handle if you want to look at some of the Firebase stuff I've done on GitHub. Uh, you can, uh, including those two demos I shared here to, uh, today, you, you can find those, make some pull requests, help me update them, <laughs> and all that. So thank you all so much. All right. Uh, thanks for the talk, Kyle. Hey, it was great. Um, we're going to head into the Q&A. Uh, Terrence Regan, or Reagan, sorry if I screwed that up, and some others want to know, what do you know now that you wish you knew sooner? Awesome. Um, so one of the things I probably would have prepped myself a little bit better on, what, uh, like I mentioned, the gotchas on my disadvantages slide was um, was the you know learning no SQL. A little, I wasn't, when I started with Firebase, you know, seven years ago or whatever, the, um, I wasn't as familiar with NoSQL yet. And so probably, you know, spending more time on, you know, understanding that. And I mean, it did take me time to get there. And so that's the thing that, uh, so what helped me get there further and faster was, changing my mindset on how I design my application. Because when you think about it, traditionally, we're always taught, especially if you're taught uh, SQL first, is you start with the data model and you design the application from the data model. With Firebase, especially the real-time database, you work backwards. You design your UI, you design how you want your application to work, and then that creates your data model. And so with that, that's what, you know, knowing that sooner, uh, Definitely would have helped me further yeah. along faster with Firebase. Good to know. Um, so I believe you answered this, but maybe there's more. So Jay asked if you mentioned some benefits of Firestore over real time, like the native offline support. And he says, are there any pros for real time mm -hmm. database over Firestore? Which I know you mentioned some. Is there more than what you mentioned? Um, so with real time versus Firestore, um, so it depends on your experience level. So with real time database, it, I mean, it's in the name, it's real time still, uh, the, the thing is it's in a much simpler format. So if your application doesn't need the complex structure, you, and you can get, uh, get through things, uh, pretty quickly with a JSON structure. That's where it's going to be much simpler, faster, and faster on the development cycle, not necessarily on the application speed, but just when you're developing, it's just a JSON structure that you're building out. And so your data model can grow, uh, grow faster that way. Um, with real time, the, it does have native offline support for mobile SDKs. So Android and iOS, it doesn't have it for web natively. Uh, you can do some with real time, but Firestore is definitely the, if you're looking to do offline support, if you're looking to do, uh, if you're more familiar with the document collection style, that's where Firestore would, uh, would be the better option there. And, and that's just, you know, you know, on the cover face value. I mean, there are, 
you know, with document collections, you can only go so deep with the document collections. I don't recall the number on the top of my head on how deep you can go with uh, with the JSON uh, real time database style. I believe it was like you, you can go like 200 nodes deep. But I don't I mean, if you go that deep with an application, you probably want to refactor some things. <laughs> but uh, but if you need to have that kind of granularity within real within your database, real time can handle. Uh, a little bit deeper with that, but, uh, but yeah, other than that, I mean, real time and file uh, Firestore are essentially the same. It's just the style is a little different between document collection and JSON style. All right, and going down the list, Martin did put a link to his uh, in the chat. I think it distracted <laughs> Kyle during the talk, actually. Yeah, that's I, I saw some questions pop up. I was like, what is this? <laughs> you were also asked if you could um, show the Firestore slide if you have any. So I don't know. This Firestore slide? Or this Firestore slide? <laughs> so if if that's what you're looking for, uh well if you want Kyle, do you have a slide deck on Firestore? Oh, just yeah. on Firestore? Uh, no, I don't have one just okay. on Firestore. I do have uh, I do have a fi uh, you know a, a, a different talk just on Cloud Functions, but uh, you know so if that's maybe what this is referring to, if you happen to see me speak and give a talk on Cloud Functions at a different event, I do have a whole separate talk just on Cloud Functions. Just because of how powerful okay. that is. Maybe that's what they're but, referring to. Uh, or maybe those slides. I'm not sure which. But we answered your question. Yeah. So hopefully yeah. that answered your question. <laughs> um, Rob Kraft would like to know if he sets up authentication for his app, does he need to store a client ID and secret in his app for the authentic mechanism? Let's see uh, for uh, so um, I guess this question. What what you're looking for here is um, it. It kind of depends on how you set it up. I assume based on the what you're asking here is let's say you're using Firebase off to within. Uh, so you're using Firebase. Sorry, uh, um, Facebook. Sorry, if you're using Facebook SSO with Firebase authentication. There is the client secret that you do need to store in the Firebase console. And then, so that doesn't need to be in your app. The All you do is add in the, include the SDK for Firebase authentication within your application. And that's what handles the authentication flow. So yes, the client and secret need to be on the console, but that does not get exposed in your app. Okay. So hopefully that answers the question. I have one question for you. Technically, I've got two, but I'm going to keep uh -oh. it at one. So there's so many products and features that are under the Firebase name. What is yes. your favorite, and why is that one your favorite? <laughs> so yeah, so out of the 18, Definitely, uh, cloud functions are my favorite, uh, just because of how powerful it is and why. I mean, it just kind of it just makes sense on you know if you've worked on any sort of server backend you know, where you're having to do complex processes and you you just chunk them down. I mean, as developers were told already, you know, smaller. You know, try to you know break our files out into you know, the necessary, like this is this one's for image processing, this one's for user authentication, this one's for text manipulation. So instead of having that all into one giant file or whatever, far, uh, uh, the cloud functions, you know, you're inherently doing that break, you know, organizing your code better. It, that way it runs just as a function. And with how powerful it is, uh, I mean, I've used it in, uh, uh, lost track of how many, different uh, applications that I've built with Firebase Cloud Functions. But um, but like with, uh, you know, when you're dealing with IoT, with mobile devices, you know, Firebase Cloud Function works, 
you know, across the board because it just listens for, I mean, it's just that fully event driv driven thing. And you can also hit it with an HTTPS call. Uh, so that way you can do timed events even if you wanted to. So there's, a, it's just so powerful and how it can control your Firebase and, you know, all the other services. So Firebase Cloud Functions, you know, and again, I have a whole, <laughs> but it, uh, it can manage your database. It can manage your hosting, your storage, authentication. Like it ties into all the Firebase services. Plus you can tie into all a, a ton of different third-party services with it as well. So it's just kind of like, brings everything together and uh, to where you, it just completes your application. So, All right. So that's my favorite. Have one final question and then. Oh, all right. So are you just, are you using just Node.js for your functions? Or are you using TypeScript? You can use both uh, for your Firebase Cloud Functions. So you can use either TypeScript or Node, uh, or just vanilla JavaScript. So Node.js is what, it runs on, and then you can write it in vanilla JavaScript or TypeScript. All right. It supports both. Sweet. I think so that's that awesome. Is. Good questions. I want to say someone else should be joining us in a second here. Awesome. Um, awesome. But we will, your slides will be shared out with all the communities, sure. and we've recorded all the talks. Um, I know there's some, uh, perfect. <laughs> there's Hannah for me. There's some feedback forms to fill out and Hannah will go over all of the wrap up fun stuff in a second here. Yeah. Great. Thank all you right. so much, Kyle. Great talk there. Thanks. All right. So I guess we'll kind Thanks. of wrap things up. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. All right. Okay. Well, great job, everyone. Definitely appreciate you all coming out. Um, let me hit present mode so you can see things a little bit better. Um, so, yeah, shout out to everyone who came today and presented. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, definitely a thank you to our sponsors. Um, because without all of you, we wouldn't be able to host this event. So thank you, Inspire 11. Um, here's some information too about what their company does. They are a full service digital and analytics consulting firm. Um, there's a video you can watch to see a little bit more about what they do. Um, you can also go to their website at inspire11.com. Um, you can also follow them on LinkedIn and Facebook for all of their uh, recent updates about their company. And yes, uh, here are all of our speakers, Jennifer, Martin, Kyle, Don, and Victoria. Uh, thank you again so much for coming out today and giving uh, your wonderful informative talks. Uh, definitely really appreciate that. And of course, a shout out to all of our Midwest uh, organizers, um, specifically Lloyd, Dan, Jeff, Jay, Emily, Miranda, and Vikish. Uh, Great job coming together and making sure we were able to uh, pull this off. So thank you guys. Uh, it was wonderful having you all come together to help out with this event. All right, so the fun part begins, survey and the raffle. So I'm going to turn this over to Emily and she will kind of fill you in on the rest of the details with that. Hi, thanks, Hannah. And yes, again, thank you so much for coming out. Thank you to Inspire 11 for hosting or for that we could sponsor some of these prizes. Um, I have here just a little bit of an example of what you could win. We have a Titan security key um, from Google Cloud and we have a Nest Mini. There will be other prizes that I don't have personally in my hands, but there will be other prizes. So if you filled out the main survey, which I just put in the chat, um, or any of our speaker specific surveys or um, tweeted about the event today, you will be entered in uh, the drawing, which will close tonight at midnight. So be sure to fill that out before tonight um, so that we can get you entered in the prize drawing. Um, so again, that link is in the chat. And then um, just to wrap up our event, we'd like to have some more time for 
networking and getting together, meeting people, talking about our speakers and talking about some of our great um, Google developer platforms. So be sure to stop by the Inspire 11 booth if you're interested in that. And um, if you're interested in GDG, stop by that uh, table as well. Uh, so our happy hour will go until six o'clock when um, our time expires here on this Remo platform. Um, again, be sure to let us know what you thought of the event and thank you so much for joining. So with that, I will start our happy hour. Enjoy.